Welcome to Sense and Sustainability, your podcast channel for sustainable procurement. We hope you like what you hear. Please go to www.iso2400.org for more information, learning resources, tools and much more. This is episode 10 of a series of 10. In this broadcast, we asked some of our steering group members about the future of sustainable procurement and the future of ISO 2400. We asked our stakeholders what they see as the future for the standard. Let's hear what they have to say. So if I was to say, what would I like to see happen next? I would like to see ISO 2400 integrated into national NDCs, so being able to track progress against SDG 12.7, so tracking national progress of sustainable procurement adoption. I would like to see people or countries being accountable in the public sector for being able to deliver against that. And I would like to see global training on ISO 2400 between two and five days to be able to enable procurers and non-procurers on how to integrate all of the genius in that standard across procurement and sustainability practices. I think there are some opportunities, you know, for the next step to look at how we can align more with standards bodies. So, for example, organisations like SIPs and even working with academia, if we can work with these organisations to to try and get them to, to include more information about 2400, and even uh, incorporate elements of 2400 or information about 2400 within the training that they provide, it could be a really fantastic way to to increase and raise um, further awareness about 2400 and the benefits that it can bring to an organisation. We need to exchange our experience and practice in implement sustainability procurement standards between all sectors and entities in order to identify the challenging and overcome with them. This exchange of practice in sustainability procurement will encourage many entities to thought about sustainability procurement and implement the standard. What happens next is, I'm afraid, legislation. So this standard was a very good preparation for companies as well to get organized And as we see, the year is evolving. We see that the public partners are increasingly looking at due diligence and the way of making supply chains more responsible. So the landscape is going to change and standards like ISO 2400 offer a structured answer to these new obligations that are upcoming. The other big evolution that is upcoming as well is requirement for improved quality of data. We need a better data gathering, more systematic that goes further to inform decisions. And then maybe the last thing that will happen next is formalization inside companies. We see that procurement is reaching a point where it gains strategic importance. So the formalization of sustainable procurement will become more and more official. So the next five years is absolutely crucial in, in what we do. We have to focus on our supply chains. So pushing our procurement through to other people's procurement. So making it all connected, specifically in carbon, but the triple bottom line as well, all through our supply chains. Well, I guess we should keep implementing 20,400. Many companies still need to go, but I also find that the 20,400 is a big standard. So we need to break it down in smaller chunks where I would say the, the, the first focus would be, number one, that the, the board would give permission uh, and give way that, that when we do tenders, that they're allowed to, to make sustainability a larger chunk of their decision. So rather than 10% of the tender, maybe it should become 30 or 40% of the tender uh, even. And then number two, um, buyers should become more creative and look for impact projects where they can combine what they're buying with, with uh, impact in society in one way or the other. Thank you for listening to our podcast on Sense and Sustainability. Please listen out for more episodes. For more information, learning resources, tools, and much more content on sustainable procurement, go to www.iso2400.org.